What is happening, everybody? So, I want to talk about the 0304 Terminator Cobra and why I feel like it's such a special car, especially when you're talking about the Pony Car Horsepower Awards that we have today. And really, to understand where we are today, though, you've got to understand where we came from and really the atmosphere that developed that 0304 Cobra. And in the late 90s, early 2000s, there really wasn't a pony car war like you see today. It was more like a little border skirmish, and it was just the Camaro versus Mustang battle. And back then, about the most you had to hope for was about 300 to 320 horsepower, about as much as a base model V6 makes today. And another issue that you had was that manufacturers didn't really see the pony car as a viable economic platform moving forward, and so they really weren't too keen at throwing cash at those cars. But all of that changed in 2003 when the Terminator Cobra was released. What SVT did is they made a beefed up version of the 4.6 liter dual overhead cam V8, lowered the compression, and threw a little Eaton 122 supercharger on top of it. Making about 8 pounds of boost, it churned out 390 horsepower and 380 foot-pounds of torque. And those were numbers that enthusiasts hadn't seen since basically the 60s in pony cars. And because of that, that one car completely changed the game and the complexion of pony cars from that point moving forward. And really, it wouldn't be rivaled until the ZL1 was released. That is a major, major contribution. And really, if you take the ZL1 out of it, Ford only had itself to you know, basically rely upon to best the power numbers that the Terminator Cobra was making with the GT500s. But the GT500s were heavy, and it wasn't uncommon for Terminator Cobras with just a couple of modifications to walk all over GT500s. But anyway, getting back to the point, that car is unimaginably uh, pivotal and special because it took what was the status quo and flipped it on its head. Superchargers had never been introduced in the Pony Car Wars, especially in the modern era. And yeah, you can maybe go back to the 60s and talk about some of the, you know, the one-off Shelby Paxton superchargers that were bolted onto 289s, but that doesn't matter. We're talking about the modern era. And to make big power, you had to have boost, and that's what they went to. Now, that wasn't the only direction Ford could have gone in, though. This is what makes that Termi so special. <clears throat> they could have gone with just a little bit more compression, maybe bump power up to about 340, 350 with that 4.6 liter. But that wasn't going to get the job done. And with the SN95 platform on its way out, they sent it out in the most spectacular fashion that they could possibly put it out in. In fact, that car is still so good to this day, even by modern performance standards, that the resale value on that car is still pretty high when you consider that the car sold for about $35,000 in 2003 and 2004, it still, for a good version of that car, will command well over $20,000. So, not too bad value for the dollar if you bought one back then. But again, to get back to it, that car takes the enthusiast to another level though when it comes to modability. See, it wasn't that uncommon to be able to take that car take a more efficient supercharger and replace the M22 with it, along with a tune and fuel upgrades. Now all of a sudden, you're talking about a car that would put over 500 horsepower to the rear wheels, and you would take what was already a mid 12 second car, and yeah, make it a 10 second car with just a few modifications that you could do in your garage over a short amount of time. And for that time, those types of performance numbers were unheard of, in a car that would be streetable, still get good fuel mileage, still knock down you know, reliability of a stock car, but yet be able to run 10 second quarter mile times. But there was a bit of an Achilles heel, and that was the independent rear suspension. Had a bad tendency to wheel hop, and shit, the uh, half shafts were, I don't know, disposable upon purchase. Basically, it needed half shafts from the factory, but aftermarket took care of those problems and with a few modifications you had a car that was dead set reliable that would run 
10 second quarter mile times, knocked down great uh, gas mileage in the process, and would basically show its taillights to almost anything that you ran across with it. So because of that, that you know, because of all of that just in a nutshell, that car basically set the stage for the GT500, the ZL1, the ZR1, the Hellcat. All of those modern supercharged pony cars of today can trace their heritage back to that GT, or, I'm sorry, back to the uh, 03, 04 Cobras. So at any rate, those are my thoughts just kind of short on the, uh, on the 0304 Terminator Cobras. Still brings a smile to my face every time I see one. And if you do see one, don't take that thing lightly because if it's had any work done to it whatsoever, it'll probably put a scalding on you if you think that uh, that little unsuspecting Mustang don't have enough to handle whatever you're going to throw at it because chances are it's been whooping ass for probably the better part of the last decade. Anyway, hope you guys are having a great one. And that's a wrap. Adios.